Welcome back to Mushman Studio. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at the newly released 22.6 Random Man and in particular the new Random Man for Mari edition. So yeah, let's jump into it now. There's good news. So we have Random Man for Mari. So in this first iteration, I guess it's gonna be about the Random Man menu here. So this one is new. The first version of, of uh, this installment, Random Man for Mari, it's about uh, adding the surface the pixel surface and uh, we can create shaders and stuff so the shader will live here if i create it will live here in the shader compartment here and so let's take a look here we have some settings under preferences as well so random man here it's kind of um it's, it's essentially for a preset here for resolution so if you want to have a 4k patch size when you create your channels 16 bit uh, bit depth so let's take a look here so my shader here i haven't created any channels just dock this here we can start to play around here and see what happens first off we have inputs so you can see there's a lot of settings it's all of the settings you have in uh, the katana or uh, maya shader it's it's the same pixel surface and um yeah let's take a look we have a uh, some differences from a regular shader in Mari. So we have this um, solo and uh, mute. So what this does, for example, if I have a shader here with specular, I can actually mute different components and look at them individually. So that's cool. You can mute diffuse or you can solo just, I wanna see just the specular or if you have um, a rough specular. So the random and shader has three specular lobes so we can take a look at this and we have different physical and artistic setting it's the same principle as in the maya or katana shader or any pixar surface shader so if i set this to artistic we have the face and edge color if i set it to physical the face color will will not do anything it's the edge color and these two settings now the refraction index so this is going to be the the index of refraction for uh, non-metallic surfaces. If you have uh, metallic surfaces, you have to enter the e extinction coefficient. So that's a, or both IOR and extinction coefficient is a three channel IOR essentially. So all metallics will have a extinction coefficient set non-metallic materials such as plastics they will only have this one if you are in the physical mode so yeah um, we're gonna go more into this in later episodes but we can just take a look here first so we have the roughness slider we can have um, you can set uh, what under advanced you can set here for example ggx for what type of uh, it's gonna be slight shift here I go between them it's more it's a, a a different tail on the ggx and the backman some settings is not mappable here in the shader but you can still drive them through if you for example create a material and you want to take settings that is looked at you can still define them so it's the same as in the arnold uh, shader some it's not mappable or you, you it is mappable but you can't visualize them so that's a caveat you have the primary we have a um, rough specular same here physical let's take something so we have clear coat let's see clear coat let's actually go to diffuse and uh, t tune this down here we have physical clear coat yeah same goes here uh, layer thickness and absorption tint you can't preview in this shader at the moment so it's the same uh, the clear coat the rough specular and the primary specular it's it, uh, that's the three specular lobes iridescence you can start to do like a beetle back or it's essentially um, soap bubble iridescence in the pixel surface iridescence advanced so yeah if you want to go to a physical you can do that let's see face gain and then the thickness here is gonna let's try set something here there we go let's take it away here we have fuss the same here it's that's gonna be kind of like 
Uh, you can slightly see it there on the corner there. It's kind of like when you do uh, something like velvet or something, you can use fuzz. Subsurface obviously is not gonna be, it's gonna be a some approximation, but I mean, it's it's OpenGL, so I'm not expecting, but still, uh, if we have a, um, if we wanna define a material, we can still define the material. Single scatter is turned off, but you can still map it. Let's see, glass, that's a funny one. It's actually, let's take this, take specular, turn everything off here. I don't want any of this. Okay, so now we just have the glass here. And yeah, as you see, it's a, um, approximation as well it's it's what it is with OpenGL but yeah when you have a material if you want to set uh, the glass properties you can still define it let's make this a red glass here or something and let's try some roughness like a frosted glass so that's kind of it on this guy we can map uh, bump and stuff like that um, yeah Let's go up to diffuse here and, and maybe take a little uh, physical, artistic. So we have some specular. Yeah, so that's the basic of the shader. So I'm happy about to see this because now I can actually start to make proper materials for my uh, random man shaders and my random man materials. So that's gonna be cool. You can expect some. Um, episodes about uh, random man materials coming out from my channel pretty soon yeah so that's half of it so let's see here if i now go here to my uh, random man menu we have a few other things here for example we can take a luxo junior so he chips with a i guess this is the pixar compound where they hang out there's a big lamp there and the ball comes with furnace so so furnace is used in shading to figure out if your um, physical if if the shader is physically correct so for example so you don't have more energy coming out than what's going in so this is just a white ball so if your shader would have like you you white ball uh, your background is one and your shader is has two coming out from uh, specular or something that you then you know that something is not okay not really sure what to use this for here really in OpenGL world because it's not gonna be 100% um, verbosity I haven't checked this out really when we want to create um, you can create shade from here or you can actually also go if let's see that if I toast this shader and let's take one of my lights here. Let's go and take my studio. You can also go here on the lighting standalone pixel surface and it should come up there. And there you go. That's the, um, the one there. So let's see, I guess I have a few channels. Let's delete the channels here and restart. So what you can do here, let's say that you want to uh, use your pixel surface and you wanna add uh, like diffuse and uh, specular for example i'm just gonna delete this first so we have a clean slate we don't have any channels uh, you want to create diffuse and your specular for uh, let's say that you want to uh, create it for the advanced specular or so the physical so let's see here. So let's see, random man, you can go to add channels to current pixel surface. That's what I do. I create what I need rather than creating everything. But you can also create pixel surface and channels. There's different combinations here. So add channels to current pixel surface. I wanna have diffuse. It should uh, create a channel and hook it up to the selected one there. If I go to my inputs, you see here the fuse random man let's say that i also want to add my specular physical channels so this is where it uh, picks up that uh, preset if you want to use 4k patches it takes the setting from the preferences so if you want to have higher resolution of your patches you have to increase the resolution or decrease the resolution in the, the random and preferences tab okay so yeah so now we have a uh, our setup here we have 
let's take a look here we have the diffuse color and my specular components set up here and um, i don't have any materials yet i need to start to define materials but we can take a look at how we can make it a simple material as well for the random shader let's close my shader and go to my node graph here see what's going on here so here's my shader i just want to right click and say auto place so we have so that's that's my connections here okay so now i want to create the material so material i want to create it for my pixel surface Ilya, let's create the shader network i'm gonna get another secondary pixel surface in my scene to work against yeah so yeah so let's go here let's go just control double click on this one to get inside so here we start to build our network let's say we want to have a color for diffuse color let's create like a, I want to create a, some kind of green color here so ideally you want to actually what I'm going to do when I create my materials is to look at them in offline rendering. Take the base colors from my renders using a pixel surface in Maya or Katana. Drive the values with physical correct values that's built upon real rendering. So my shader in this case, my secondary pixel surface here needs to have physical enabled here for cost. That's what I want to create a material for. So my, um, yeah, so we have the face and edge color. I don't like the shortened names. I hope uh, this is actually not Brenderman's fault. This is the um, foundry side need to fix this. It's a little, um, you have to think sometimes when you, when you see this. So I guess, so edge color, let's create just the color. So there we have this beginning there. Then we want another color and we want to set this to uh, let's say that we want to have 1.5 for example in IOR uh, you can ho hook up any nodes so in, in my case I took color but you can drive this with uh, floats or any, any other things there we have something and uh, let's go to uh, extension coefficient I don't want anything but I can set a uh, black constant because if you're gonna blend between a metal and uh, a non-metal, so a metal shader will have, in or a physical will have this map to uh, a value that you look up in an index or refraction database. So, but when you wanna blend between a metal and, and one that doesn't have one, so it's good to just insert black there, even if you don't use it. Let's take a float node here for my uh, roughness and set this to, let's see here, and go to my color and start to tweak this a bit. I want something that's a little more muted, a bit darker, something like this. Roughness needs to be increased a bit. So let's say that this is the material I want to create. You can just go edit on the node here. And if you want to create a, uh, let's say that you want to map the roughness there, for example, you can rename this to roughness. You can either expose this setting here, go to this branch here. It's going to propagate it out to this node here. So now we have the roughness slider. Or you can also pick something inside it. So if you hit the P button here, let's see, you want to pick um, this color, for example. I should have named it better. That we have the color, so now we can start to change the material color of this as well. Let's say that you want to make uh, something like this. All the painted something. Let's say that this is your material you want to export. You name it to uh, all the painted metal it's not a metal but it's it's painted on top of the metal so yeah node export as material you want to go to a location in my case i have this global directory and now i want to create my materials here i want to have my uh, a new folder called pixar surface materials and i want to all oh, paint the metal let's export this out it's gonna create a shader ball and package the, the material container so I can use it. And then we need to actually add this into my uh, material 
shelf as well. So first off we can just wait for it to finish here and delete this. Go to my shelf and actually create a new shelf called Pixar Surface. So yeah, I hope um, Foundry gets a little better shelf for materials and these type of things that you can sort and make, you know, like tabs easier or like okay i want to have my metals my painted my whatever type of materials more in organized at the moment it's gonna live here in the shelf so let's drag that material into so i need to go go to my same location global pixel service there we have it i drag it there so let's say now I want to use, uh, I have the, this is my first material defined, either drag it on to, if I would go here to my color just to have a channel, I can just drag the material onto from my shelf like this on, onto here and it will apply it as a material, there we have it, so that's my first so let's say that you had another material, you can drag it and then you can start to mix between them, blend or do whatever you want. So yeah, so this is it's kind of uh, mimicking exactly what I did back in the day with my node graph, but I had to build everything from scratch. So yeah, this is going to be easier to define and distribute materials and do bulk texturing much easier. Uh, and now we have full control because yeah, we can look at the, the settings and, and build more advanced shaders that we know exactly the outcome when we render it. So yeah, the OpenGL representation is, in most cases, is kind of close. I, I've tested it. I tested it offline versus OpenGL, and in most cases, roughness is a little bit off, especially on higher roughness values, but that's more uh, on the foundry side, actually, I think some of the how it handles roughness is need to be improved with the lights and, and all that. But it's good to now be able to define my materials better. So it's going to be a, a lot of material creation on my side coming from my studio. So in the next episode, I'm going to take a look at the other Renderman additions that was actually released to Renderman itself, the new uh, curvature pattern in particular so yeah stay tuned and if you want to support my channel consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you don't miss when i go live or do one of these tutorials